perfect. Okay, so to start out, can you tell us about how you first became involved with rugby? Um, well, I, I first became um, involved in rugby by chance, really. It was never um, a uh, deliberate decision um, that I took to play the sport. I was quite a, you know, an active kid growing up, uh, you know, dabbled a little bit in netball, um, athletics, uh, soccer, um, but I, I rugby was, I, I came across it when I was at university, actually, which was about five, six years ago. And um, I was first introduced to the sport then. Um, it was sevens uh, at the time. And I tried it and I, I enjoyed it. And uh, six years later, we're here. So um, never a conscious decision, honestly. I, 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 if anything, I never even knew that, uh, you know, women actually played, you know, rugby. So... I just I just uh, took interest in the sport and took it from there. What was it like growing up in Kealisha? I know, like, how proud are you to represent the people with what you're doing and the fact that you're well-educated, captain of the national team, and now you're going pro? It, it's, it's, it's a great honor, really, um, because Kailisha is... It's not an ideal place to grow up in. You know, it's, it's one of the most notorious townships in the Western Cape, you know, particularly if you're, you're a young female, you know, but we grow up under these circumstances and we, 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 we still flourish. So to, to almost be a success story, if you like, you know, just to be someone who can show that, hey, where you've grown up or where you were born, it, it doesn't determine the type of potential that you have and, and, and you know, your, how big your dreams should be. So it's something that's very close to my heart to, 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 to be that type of a person who, 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 who can and has proved, if anything, that, you know, yes, we grow up under difficult circumstances, but we, 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 we can conquer. Did you see a pathway for you to pursue uh, pursue sport professionally as first a female and secondly as that young girl from Kealisha? Uh, I've always dreamed about it, if I'm to be honest. Uh, since I started playing the sport, um, it became a dream of mine to actually play at the highest possible level and actually, um, you know, become a professional um, at rugby here in South Africa. Uh, the Springbok women aren't professional. It's only the, the sevens. So being the first 15s player to actually play professionally, I think, um, you know, it shows that there's great potential um, within our own domestic women's rugby setup. And I think it's quite important that we start thinking towards that direction, that, uh, you know, there is a pathway, actually. Um, th there is a market for women's rugby to be prof professional, but um, it's just not quite happening yet, you know, and it's particularly difficult if, if you are female, <laughs> because uh, if, if you are, to be honest, society does not take um, female rugby players seriously. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is, you know, uh, we can't be tiptoeing around that. So you have that added on to the difficulty as well. You know, yeah. So it's quite important that when an opportunity like like this or like um, playing professionally comes, that uh, you know, I make sure that you know, I, I sort of try to kick down doors for others as well, um, other female rugby players in South Africa to actually try to or to get um, such such opportunities. I kind of want to touch back on the presence of women's rugby in South Africa. How is the viewership, you know, the media coverage and funding and the support of women's rugby in South Africa? Look, uh, women's rugby in South Africa has been around for about 15 years now. Um, so it's fair to say that it's relatively young. Um, we've grown from, from, from the past, uh, you know, 15 years. Um, you know, we've made some significant, uh, you know, strides towards uh, the development and growth of, of women's sport or, or women's rugby in particular um, here in South Africa. However, we have made, we have made that uh, type of a pro, uh, progress, but I think that we, are, we still have a long way to go in terms of, uh, you know, growing the sport, having systems in place that actually facilitate that growth. Um, you know, 
seeing a lot more of women's rugby games, uh, perhaps even have it commercialized, um, you know, so that you can act, actually attract sponsorships and funding. You know, those types of things are things that would give uh, South African women's rugby a boost. And I think it's a global problem that we're faced with that, um, you know, women's rugby is, is, is always either under, under supported, underfunded, uh, lack of, or little or lack of viewership, et cetera. So those are quite important things that we should be looking at. Um, you know, of course, we do acknowledge and celebrate, um, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the growth in the sport. But of course, we'd love to see a lot more of these things. You know, we'd love to play in front of packed stadiums. You know, we'd, we'd, we'd love to be mainstream more than an afterthought. Because unfortunately, currently, um, you know, I have reason to believe that that's the way it is, you know. Um, so... It's it's almost unfair that we compare ourselves to, to our male counterparts, but in order for us to see and to, to sort of amplify our growth and or lack thereof is that we actually compare ourselves to our male counterparts and to the rest of, of the world. And um, we have our work cut out for us. In terms of rugby as a sport, what has it given you? Do you do you feel at home on the rugby pitch, and does it allow you to express yourself and get away from that norm which people perceive that you should be? I think one of the reasons why I stuck with rugby was because I felt a newfound sense of of freedom. It liberated me a lot. Um, it created it all opened up a whole new, different world um, for me in terms of opportunity and expression. You know. Growing up as a as a as a as a a girl and ultimately a woman who's rather on the more muscular side, uh, you know, you you um, you sort of prone to to so to certain stereotypical views, if I may put it that way, from from people, even sometimes from people that you know, you know. So I sort of developed a thick skin and. The one place where I could be 100% comfortable being a, a slightly muscular woman was on the rugby pitch. And, you know, I, I felt instantly empowered, uh, you know, um, and I developed a voice that I think had I not played rugby, I wouldn't have had. You know, so rugby has changed my life for the better tremendously. And not long ago, you captained Springboks women's team that qualified for the 2020 Rugby World Cup. What does that achievement mean to you? And how will it help push women's rugby in South Africa? Jeez, it's, on a personal level, it's a great achievement. Eh? Um, you know, I think that every athlete, you know, dreams of, of, of uh, you know, representing their nation at the highest level. So for us as rugby players, the World Cup is, you know, uh, the the greatest of, of all competitions. So it was a great, great experience for me. And it's, it's, I'm, to this day, I'm still, you know, very, very honored. I get excited when I think about it. So we're looking forward to, to, to actually heading and competing in a World Cup. But I think the bigger picture of that World Cup qualifier was, or is, that this opportunity is not only ours but it's for the whole of South Africa it's for every female rugby player who dreams of such of getting such an opportunity every young girl Kailita anyway who has a dream of uh, you know playing rugby but is not quite sure about it um, that type of a victory or qualifying for for the World Cup I think was for them really and you know all of us the whole team we have had people who have you know, invested in us, who've sacrificed so much so that we could be able to, to you know, get an opportunity, such an opportunity. So, you know, qualifying for the World Cup meant so much to us, but more than that, it meant that, you know, finally, um, you know, our hard work, sacrifice, sweat, blood, even tears, you know, are finally um, paying off. I kind of want to touch on your time in Spain um, now. So you set off to Spain in January to join the SD Ibar Femenino, um, the women's rugby team there. What, it mean, what did it mean to you to be the first African woman to go pro in the sport? Very exciting first, I must say. Um, <laughs> it, it, was, it was very exciting for me to just to experience something different, uh, you know, to 
explore, to learn, and absorb as much as possible. Um, but m over and above that, geez, I, I came to the realization that, you know, that type of an opportunity, it, it, it shouldn't be, you know, something that, or it shouldn't a first that we, that we, we are celebrating. It should be something that's normal. You know, it should be normal that, uh, you know, uh, women drug players go play abroad, but, it, but currently it's not. So now it means that, hey, someone has done it. You know what I mean? It's possible. It's possible. So it's just, it is such, it is so awesome really for me to be the first person, but I don't want to be the only person. You know, that's, that's a big thing for me. I don't want it just to be, um, you know, my thing that, yeah, okay, we have one person who's done it. I, I'm, I want to see a, a, a pattern, you know, where we are on an upward trajectory where the, the sport is growing so much that we have many people or many South African rugby players who are able to play, not only in Spain, but everywhere, anywhere in the world, actually. Um, so, yeah, it, it was quite an exciting experience. I'm looking forward to going there again. But currently, I'm not... Uh, I'm not certain yet about anything. So, yeah. What influence will that achievement make on women's rugby in South Africa? I know you touched on, you know, trying to influence um, other rugby players to kind of join you where you're at, but what influence do you think this will make? I think it will have a great influence, really. Um, because if, if, if we, 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 we look at it, being the first person to do anything, anyway, is, is, is quite influential. You know, people start to look up and listen to you. People want to know who you are. They want to hear your story. And then that gives you a platform to, to be a voice of, of change, if you like, you know, to be an, an agent of positive changes, no matter how small it is, you know, in your community, in, in, in the rugby world, in, in, in the sports world, you know what I mean? In, or just the world at large. So that's the type of influence that I, would, I want to have. And that's the type of influence that I think that, um, you know, women's rugby should have. What were your initial reactions to the team? Did you get homesick at all when you first arrived? And how has <laughs> the country supported you for this? Oh, man, it, it, it was incredible. I, I received a very warm welcome, um, you know, from the Spanish side. Um, I had serious, severe bouts of homesickness in the first couple of, uh, you know, weeks, which, which is natural, which I got over. Um, you know, I, I, I just had to sort of figure out, um, you know, uh, a way in which I was to approach things. And I think that I did. And uh, I had a great time, made some friends, lifelong friends, actually, um, you know, explored, you know, experienced a, a new culture, completely new. Um, and I've also grown as a, as a person, really. I think mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, I'm a lot more tolerant now of, of, of people who don't understand the language that I speak. So, um, you know, it, it's a, such a great experience and, you know, it's, it's one of the experiences that I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll treasure for, for the rest of my life. How does women's rugby in Spain differ from South Africa? Like, how is the funding and the support of the women's team there different? Oh, so it, it's quite different, actually, um, you know, from the way in which um, the game is played to the way in which it's supported, etc. What stood out for me was the fact that, um, you know, uh, my club, that is the SDA bar, actually paid male players the exact same amount of salary as, 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 as females, which was astounding to me because it, it doesn't happen here in South Africa at all. You know, so that shows you the type of commitment. It shows you, you know, the type of progressiveness um, you know that that um, you know uh, Spain has when it comes to um, male and female sports. So it was one thing that I I I I, um, I noticed, and it was great to see. It was great to experience. You know, um, you know, people actually uh, enjoy the game. Yes, Spain is a, a football mad or soccer mad nation, if you like. But the way in which you know they've invested in in in, in their in, in women's rugby. It's actually it's actually amazing, and the results show. You know, Spain is easily one of the top ten um, in in the world currently, in the 15s, and the sevens are doing exceptionally well as well. So, I think that just goes to show what 
type of potential women's rugby had, provided it has the right backing. I know your story will inspire young girls um, all around the world who have come from similar disadvantaged backgrounds, like breaking those stereotypes and opening doors for young kids, allowing them to dream um, big. How Im important do you think it is for young girls to have role models that they can look up to? And how important mm -hmm. is it for you to give back to your community? It's actually very important. It's one of the things that are quite close to my heart. Um, you know, I, I, I coach uh, young girls and boys actually and mentor them as well here in Kailicha. I think that we, we need to be good role models to them because we are now grooming the next generation of young leaders, next generation of, you know, prominent sports people. So they need to, you know, sort of understand and see it that um you know it's it's actually possible nothing in this world can stop you if you have a dream and you're actually working towards it so it's very important that you know young people be or young uh, aspiring rugby players be guided um also inspired as well by someone who walked the path that they are hoping to walk 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 on uh, especially someone who's actually you know blazed a trail if you like that um you know this is the way, this is how to do things, etc. So it's of utmost important, you know, that we nurture um, youth, that we, 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 we show them the world so that they can be able to make, you know, informed decisions. And more importantly than that is actually giving back to the sport, um, you know, giving back to the community, because if you empower, in my view, if you empower a girl child, one young child you've literally empowered the whole community you know which is why I, I i devote my time to these those types of programs where you know i want to coach young girls i want to and boys i want to you know mentor them i want to be um, you know, a good example to the, for them so they can you know have a point of reference okay so I know in South Africa, the government um, has put in place a transformation charters compelling international playing teams in South Africa to implement quotas on the amount of white and non-white players on the team, um, especially for a white dominated sport such as rugby and cricket. I know it's a difficult topic, but do you think it's working? Do you think it's the right approach to take? And is it something that affects women's sports? Well, given our history um, as uh, South Africa, um, we know that we, you know we've had quite a quite a, a rough history, and sport has almost become a vehicle for reconciliation, um, for for um, social cohesion, you know. But if you are truly, truly to 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 have an equal society, a society that um, you know, uh, as equity as well, because I believe that equality and equity are two different things. If we are to equate, um, you know, uh, disadvantaged, disadvantaged groups, we, we must have policies in place to, 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 to facilitate that. And I think um, quotas initially uh, were put in place to, to, to for equity, um, really. And of course, you know, we've always had talented players of, of, of color, um, or should I call them black players as we call them, here in South Africa. They've always been there. They've always had the talent, but they just weren't given enough opportunity. Currently, we, we see a rise um, in, in, in numbers, if I may call it that, of, of, of African players who are doing exceptionally well. If you look at rugby, the World Cup winning squad, in fact, you know, um, it, it showed the type of talent that African players had. All they needed was an, oppo an opportunity. So in my view, I think, yes, um, you know, the, 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 the quota system was an issue because now it meant that no matter how talented you were as a black player, you were to be labeled as a quota player, not you were in the team simply because of a policy, not because of your talent. You know, those are some of the issues that, you know, such players had to sort of, um, you know, uh, come across. But fast forward to 2020 or 2019, I think that, uh, I think we've, we've made that men uh, mental and psychological switch in terms of acknowledging that, you know, it's more than just a policy now, it's a way of life. It's how it should be. 
because there are many, many talented African players who have been given the opportunity and who are doing the most, the best, um, actually. You know, we, we boast an, uh, the first African um, captain to, to win a World Cup, Sia Kolisi. That shows you that, you know, um, the type of progress that we've made as a, as a, as a nation with post-apartheid and as a, as a, as a rugby nation um, as a whole. And it's a great example to, to the world. On the question whether it affects um, women's rugby, to be honest, with women's rugby, we've never had a racial issue. Our issue or our issues were never truly racial in terms of where we'd had to implement policy to facilitate or to to, to facilitate, the, to weed out racism, if I may put it that way, because 90% of our team is actually black, consists of black players. So we honestly had never had, um, you know, uh, racial equity issues. What we do have is our gender equity issues. So whether or not the status, uh, this, the, the, the quota system affected or affects women's rugby on a player's perspective, no. Perhaps at a manager management level where, you know, coaches and uh, uh, team managers and the like would be appointed, maybe then you'd have to consider that. But for, play, for purposes of, 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 of actually being in the team and playing, you're selected purely because you, you have the talent. And currently, um, 90% of our team are African women, which then means that there's plenty of talent within the African um, race, if I may call it. Um, it's open to everyone. It's open to everyone. And that doesn't mean that any other race with, with, within um, you know, the, the country aren't good enough to be in the Springbok women's team. No, it's just that currently that is where you, you find or you'll see the most talent. And in terms of your own home, Kealisha, has there been any negativity from the people for you representing the Springboks and playing rugby? I'm so blessed to, to, to live in and among people or in a community with people who are extremely supportive. You know, the excitement that they have when perhaps they see or they read a newspaper article about me somewhere is actually humbling. You know, the kids here in Kalicha recognize me, they know who I am, and I'm, 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 I'm one of them. I belong to the community, they are my people, I'm there. So it's quite humbling to, to be surrounded by people who are so supportive. Fortunately for me, I've honestly never had any negative experience simply because I play rugby. Of course, you know, you'll get those comments where, oh, you, 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 you're so muscular. It must be because of the rugby. Or you, you train so much. Why do, you, why do you even put yourself through that? Oh, but then again, it has to be because of the rugby. You know, so I get comments al along those lines, but never truly anything that would be so negative that to just, you know, ruin my day. <laughs> cool. And in your opinion, what does the future for women in sports in South Africa look like? What, what do you think can be done to further their exposure? I think uh, the future of women's sports in South Africa is extremely bright. I've, you know, it just gives me goosebumps just thinking about the amount of talent that we have in this country, you know, from rugby to athletics, to swimming, to, to, to actually all sports codes, you know, and we, there are organizations and people who are actively involved in, um, you know, making sure that women's sport is constantly on the limelight, like G Sports for Girls, for instance, the South African Rugby Legends Association, and, um, you know, various other sports um, associations who are, you know, working tirelessly to make sure that, um, you know, women's rugby gets the type of recognition that it, well, women's sport has, in general gets the type of recognition that it deserves. So it's very encouraging to see those types of things. Um, that's why I'm saying that, you know, our future is very bright. What we currently need, of course, now is a lot more exposure. Um, sponsorships will always be an issue because sports is a business too. You know, so um, I would like to see women's sports become more commercialized. Um, you know, I'd like to see, um, you know, stadiums being packed, you know, build women's sports, into into franchises, you know, 
I think uh, we should be able to live comfortably from a sports career. You know, it shouldn't be something that we do on the side and then have a job, but then expect it to be at peak, to perform at your peak all the time, you know what I mean? So um, the past 15 years have showed us that uh, we, we can achieve so much. I think the next five to 10 years, um, you know, with um, the buy-in of the right people um, in terms of funding, sponsorships, um, media involvement uh, in terms of broadcasting women's sport um, if we can get those things right we can we can we can actually be in a much much better place currently than we are currently what advice would you give to girls who want to follow in your path despite the challenges they might face <sighs> the most important thing is this one you need to in my experience, you need to have so much confidence and belief in your own abilities first before someone else does. That's the most important thing because if you get that right, no one can tell you that you can't because you believe that you can so much. It, you just it comes in the one ear and goes out the other. So it's very important to have confidence in your in your in your own abilities. It's also important to seek advice and help from time to time. And don't be shy to ask for help and also accept it when it's offered to you. Um, because at the end of the day, sports is a road that you walk with, other, with others. You know, you get lifted and you lift others, you know. So um, also, I think another important thing would be to have a good work ethic, you know, in terms of um, fighting for your dream, working towards your dream. You know, and um, actually being persistent in terms of making it happen. The world is our oyster, really. There's absolutely nothing that, you know, anyone cannot do should they put their minds to it. So I think for now, those are the things that I'd, I'd tell I'd tell a young girl that, hey, if you believe it, 100%, definitely you can achieve it. I wanted to touch on your degree in law. I know you graduated from the University of the Western Cape in 2019 in hopes of pursuing law in the future. Was it a hard decision to put it off in order to pursue a pro career in rugby? If I'm to be honest, no. <laughs> it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't a difficult decision to make. Um, sport and education go hand in hand. I, I, I could never savor the, the two. So, it was just a, a well thought out decision, not difficult, but just well thought out in terms of what the goals that I have for my, for, for my sports career and also the goals that I have for, 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 you know, for, for academic purposes. I think that uh, the law degree will come in very handy um, at a later stage as well, because I'd like to find myself in a position where I can influence policy. You know, by that, I mean policy that would be geared towards the advancement of women's sports, women's rugby in particular. So I think uh, it's not something that I'm necessarily putting off, um, that I won't um, take up in the near future. For now, the focus is on, on, on my sports career, but uh, my dream is to be able to use um, the, 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 the law degree to advance South African women's sport on a policy level because I think we also need a policy driven um, endeavor really if we are to effect real changes with sports in South Africa because we can talk all we want um, really but if there isn't anything in black and white that um, not force but for the lack of a better word enforces um, you know, the development, the growth, um, and the other factors that we've mentioned towards the growth of women's rugby. If we can get, uh, you know, that down, then I think we, we should be fine. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time talking with me today. Um, <laughs> is there anything else you want to add on, like, in terms of what we've talked about so far? I think, I think uh, you know, we've, we've covered quite some difficult issues which is great actually um yeah. which is which is great we need to have difficult uh, conversations but um other than that i would just like to encourage really um 
people to to start paying much more attention to South African women's rugby because it is on the rise. Um, and uh, also good luck to all the other nations who have qualified for, for, for the World Cup. Look forward to seeing each other there. <laughs> other than that, uh, thank you very much for having this chat with me and, and for your time. Yeah, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Thank you.